Hello guys, today is August 11th, 2020. We got some big uh, sports news to talk about, including uh, college football. Uh, college football is um, uh, up in the air right now on whether or not playing. Bunch of conferences have already postponed the season, uh, and so now it's up to the NCAA on seeing if they want to move into the spring, uh, we've seen a bunch of conferences postpone the season and cancel the season. What's your thoughts on this? Do, should they uh, move it to the spring on this, Zach? I think either way you have a big risk, I'd say. You, you, if they do what they, they initially started to, to do, is just do, do, do the Big Ten or they do conference. Yeah, yeah. conference only schedule. There's yeah. been a lot of uh, talks Cause about a bunch of conferences just doing that, yeah. Because I talked to my cousin who, who who does Troy Volleyball, and what Troy Volleyball is doing is they're only doing, like, conferences. They're only doing conference uh, uh, teams right now because they, they, they play... 34 games a season, and they're down to nine right now with conference games. So, um, I, I think uh, the SCAA should follow that is just doing a uh, conference with football. Uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what they do uh, for the season. Um, I'm wondering... Uh, but a bit, the Big Ten is uh, meeting today on the uh, whether or not they're going to play the season or not. It's going to be interesting to see. Um, going on to the MLB, uh, we had one of the most uh, happy sights to see for the MLB involving the Astros. Uh, it was involving the Oakland A's and the uh, Houston Astros. Uh, and a little background on what happened with uh, that led up to this. So, Oakland A's uh, player Ramon Laureano, he got hit once in the game before. Hit again. He got hit the night before. Uh, and then he got hit again. And then he got hit the second time up to bat. And then he went down to first. And Houston Astros... Coach Alex Cintron might have just shown that he's the biggest baby of all time. There's a video of him yelling at uh, Ramon Laureano, uh, saying, Come on, come fight me, come fight me. And then Ramon Laureano did what people would do when they uh, talk about fighting. Let's go, let's go. He went after him. And the most karma thing ever happened. The Astros coach was like this, showing him up, wanting to fight. And then once Ramon Laureano beelined after him, he took a step back. And the Houston Astros had a huge line to protect their coach. And it was the biggest, uh, like, I, I just think it was one of the most satisfying things to see. Like, one of the Astros coaches... Uh, wanting to fight, and then all of a sudden he sees that guy beelining after him, and then he just backs off. That was that that was awesome to see. Um, uh, but yeah, uh, what do you think about this? Oh come on, you know what I think about this. This is hilarious. This is the ash. Whether whether there's fans or not. This is the Astros shame tour this year. Mm-hmm. It is going to be hell for the Astros the entire season, no matter where they are, no matter if there's fans or not. It is going to be hilarious to see how Houston deals with this uh, trash tour. Um... The shame tour, if you want to call it. Um, I call it the trash.
guys because they cheated. Yeah. Every, every team that cheats is is Patriots. <sighs> wow. Uh, a, that was a weird call. <laughs> uh, Some so teams you, have uh, not forgotten about this uh, flashback to win. Uh, Dodgers pitcher Joe Kelly hit uh, Alex Bregman, and he got suspended for eight games. Um, uh, that was the season, wasn't it? What? That was the first game, right? That was one of the first games. I think that was like the first series or the second series that the Astros had. Uh, Joe what? Kelly hit uh, Alex Bregman, and then you could see in the camera... He, he just said, F you, F you, F you to him. And, like, it was insane how that happened. And I just think some some people forget about this because of how long it's happened. Like, because the season got held back a little bit. And then, like, a lot of people uh, forgot about all this cheating stuff. And obviously, there are still yet. some teams that really know uh, about this, and they feel heartbroken, especially for the Dodgers, who were in the World Series with the Astros. They must be very, very upset, obviously, with Joe Kelly on the Dodgers. He uh, voiced his displeasure. Um, but, yeah, I don't think this is going to be done. Uh, nope. But, yeah, yeah it's going to be interesting to see the uh, rest of the no, season. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be Hilarious. Hilarious, yes. It will be hilarious. Uh, more MLB news. Pittsburgh Pirates, uh, Phil Evans. Uh, I saw this. This was absolutely awful. He's going to be out for the season. He collided with his teammate, Jorge Polanco. Um, <coughs> bless me. Bless you. Uh, thanks. Uh, he, he collided with uh, Jorge Polanco. Um... And he got an elbow to the face. He, he suffered a concussion. And he fractured his jaw. He's going to be out for the season. This was absolutely horrible to see. Because he ended up being in a neck brace and stuff. For precaution. But yeah, something you don't want to see there. Uh, especially. Um, just because it's horrible to see that happen. Um, also, uh... Mets pitcher Marcus Stroman just opted out of the season, uh, I think, yesterday, uh, because of personal reasons. Um, so that's going to be interesting. Uh, also, Hunter Pence, did we talk about this? Ruining uh, Johnny Cueto's no-hitter. He absolutely yeah. went brainless um, and totally just missed it. He was... Nowhere close to the ball. He didn't know where in the world that ball was. And he uh, uh, ruined Johnny Quaid's no-hitter, which is unfortunate. Basketball Hall of Famer Paul Westfall diagnosed with brain cancer. That is very unfortunate. Uh, hopefully he'll uh, be better. Um, obviously, prayers out to Paul Westfall. Um, NBA, I saw the most ridiculous thing ever. Um, Draymond Green's comments uh, on Devin Booker led him to a uh, fine of fifty thousand dollars, and they called Never it. Draymond Green. They called it that he was tampering, but it was the most ridiculous thing I have ever heard in my life. All he said is. Uh, that Devin Booker should leave the Suns. Um, and they said that was tampering because he's suggesting that he should leave. And the NBA, my golly. Th this is just, that's ridiculous. Say, if you're an NBA player, all he, he didn't say come to our team at all. He didn't say come to our team, we want you there. All he said is he should just leave. He should just leave. They find him fifty thousand dollars. It's ridiculous. Um, I think Draymond has trouble with the NBA in the past, so like him saying that just pushed it even more. So, but I don't think that should be finable. 
Like, he didn't say directly, come to the Warriors, at all. Like, No, it, why? But it's just ridiculous at this point, because, like, you gotta keep your mouth shut. Apparently, you can't even say, hey, you should leave that team because they're so trash. Like, the Suns, I know they've been killing it in the bubble and stuff, but, like, dude, like, it's the Suns. Devin Booker is an all-star player, and he should just leave that team. You can't do that. The Warriors aren't even in the bubble, I don't think. They're not even playing. Yeah. Even so, Devin, uh, no, Draymond Green was on TNT when he said that, uh, and then he got fined by the NBA, and the thing is that the NBA did, which is kind of smart, but kind of stupid, is they fined him the max amount of money that he can't, uh, protest this on. They fined him $50,000, if that fine was more than $50,000, he could, uh, appeal that fine and, uh, have the NBA look into it more. Uh, they made it so it's the max amount that he can't appeal that fine. Uh, smart by the NBA, but, I mean, it's just ridiculous. It's just ridiculous. I think they had to change that tampering rule. Um, I don't like Draymond, so good on the NBA. But yeah, I, I'm just thinking about, like, what he said. And I, like, I don't think that deserved to be finable. I, I just don't think... Because, you know, like... I, I think they took what context was there, which was... Yeah, but... We, we, we need you on... We need... But he didn't server. say that. That's the thing. He didn't say that. That's the only but thing. The, uh, He's hinting towards it, but he didn't I say the whole... I think that's, that's whole... why they find him, is because they yeah. knew the text was there. He didn't have point bluntly say it, but there was context of, hey, we need another star player, Durant left, Steph is hurt, he probably will be, yeah. for a while, because the new NBA season starts in September, and we need you. Yeah. I think it's just ridiculous, but NBA does what it has to do. Um, the Suns have been killing it in the bubble. They are now 6-0 and in the NBA bubble. It's absolutely insane. They're going off. Uh, good for the Suns. Uh, moving on, I'm going to just talk about uh, a lot of the sad things in college football. Uh, because, folks, it is time to where we go ahead and dive down to every uh, postponement and cancellation that college football has to offer so far. Uh, be be prepared to grab your test shoes because there's a lot on this list of how many conferences have postponed and canceled the season. Uh, so the MAC uh, said that they are postponing their football season. The Mountain West postponed all their fall sports. The Old Dominion College postponed uh, everything. The College of Charleston postponed all fall sports. And the FCS football postponed their playoffs. So there are no FCS uh, playoffs now. NCAA Division Three fall championships are canceled. Big West postpones all fall, fall sports. Some, Summit League is delaying all fall sports. The MAC, uh, where I said uh, they canceled fall sports, all fall sports. Um, the A-10 conference postpones fall sports, and Colonial Athletic cancels the season. Um, what with all of this, all these conferences um, uh, postponing and delaying uh, their season. Uh, how? big of an effect is this going to have on college football itself um, with all these conferences uh, postponing canceling the season and stuff how how big of a uh, how big of a thing is this going to have on football I, I think I, I think it'll have a minimum impact I think the uh, college football program will look at all these things and say, okay, when are they, are they coming back, 
are they postponing till spring? Are they like just delaying their seasons or, or, or some, something to that effect? And they'll probably go off of what all these conferences are doing. Um, but I don't. I don't think. I, I think what the college football 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 will do is. I think they'll either delay it by a couple of weeks after the NFL starts, or uh, just postpone it until the spring. But then that contradicts with baseball. Yeah. Um. It's gonna be baseball, so I don't know what they what they'll do because it's it's very tough to see what they're gonna do, especially. Um, especially like the Power Five conferences, uh, Big Ten are just meeting today. I think if the Big Ten uh, announces something that's very, very big, of like we're postponing uh, the uh, season until spring, I think this is going to affect um, uh, college football because of uh, you think if the Big let, let's just think for a moment here. If the Big Ten postpones uh, football and moves it to the spring, like, isn't college football going to have to move their playoffs? Because, I mean, look at Ohio State. They're not going to be playing until the spring, theoretically. Uh, this is going to change a lot here on whether or not uh, uh, where the college football playoffs is going to be. Um, what do you think about that? Like, if, if there's a big team in a conference and they move their conference to spring, how is that going to affect, like, college football playoffs when uh, there's all these things going on uh, and stuff? Like, how is that going to affect college football playoffs, especially, like, Ohio State, who definitely uh, is going to be in the running for college football playoffs? I, I think it. If Ohio State moves the conference, then and the college football team plays, then it won't have that big of an impact on the on the playoffs because Ohio State's going to the playoffs no matter what. Yeah. It doesn't matter where what conference or where they play. And by the way, it, anyway. you know what I would want to see. Ohio State going to the SEC because this, well, think about it, think about it. What if you had a conference game of Ohio State and Alabama? Like, that's basically the championship game itself. Like, but that's as a conference game. Like, what, what happens if they go to the SEC where there's bigger competition and stuff there? Uh, what do you think about that? I think it'd be fun to see, but I don't think it would happen. Well, then where do you think they would go? That's the thing. If they were to go somewhere, where would they go? I don't know all the conferences. That's, that's my issue. I don't know all the conferences that they would have to go to. I well, don't... Yeah, that's... Because it's, it's a problem of, like, affecting scheduling, too. Because if they're doing a 10-game conference, uh, and if a team were to move, it's going to affect all the 10-game uh, schedule. Because uh, that's going to be interesting to see. But I don't think they're going to move conferences. But it, it I just think it would be a very interesting well, I, thing. I'd say this. They move conferences if they cancel the already scheduled 10-game 10 co 10 college football uh, schedule. And with, with the Big with the Big Ten, I highly doubt that the Big Ten is going to cancel because of all that money uh, going in with the Big Ten. Penn State said that if they cancel the college football playoffs or college football... They're moving. Huh? They're moving. Um, no, they they lose uh, money in, in the nine-figure range. 
I think that's going to affect every single Big Ten team, too. I, know. I think I think Penn State will lose a lot more money than, say, Purdue or Illinois or, yeah. or Michigan. Or, I, I'd say Ohio State and uh, Penn State are going to be the biggest losers out of that in, in the 9 or 10 figure range. Well, Penn State came up with a statement that they, they can't do that they lose nine figures, so I don't know how much money Ohio State would lose, but I think I, I think the teams are going to lose money if, if they cancel no matter what, but nine figures is a lot of money for Penn State to lose if they don't play. Uh, I'm just seeing this right now. Um, the MLB is uh, thinking about having a uh, bubble uh, format in the playoffs, and I'm just going to say this. First off, MLB, you should have had a bubble uh, for the regular season. Um, yeah, they should have. And I think, uh, also, I heard that Commissioner Rob Manfred, uh, he said, uh, he mentioned with the Cardinals and the Marlins, uh, with all of them uh, postponing all these games, he said that there's still a way to get 60 games. And I'm like, how? How are you possibly going to do this with... There's been teams that have played, like, 13 games. The Cardinals have played five. Well, they, they could do what they did with... With the Marlins, have a seven-game... No, with the, uh, the Reds, because they had, they had a rain like a rain delay during the game and they played. Just have all double headers? Yeah. That's true, but that's going to be draining for the team, just like playing double headers on the daily, I think. But I think at this point you're going to have to do it. Well, that's a problem. Well, it, you normally have three games a, a series, right? Yeah. So, you could play one game, Day Friday, and then you could have the uh, other two on on uh, Saturday. Yeah, I think that's what they're gonna have to do because uh, they are losing time to finish all sixty games, especially if they've played five and others have played about fifteen or so. They are losing time on this. And I think it's going to be very interesting on seeing what the MLB is going to do with the Cardinals, especially because of how many games they have uh, not played. Uh, it's going to be very interesting to see here what uh, they're going to do. Uh, and I think, uh, man, like, I'm just wondering what... Uh, what teams are going to do, like, if they don't get 60 games in, how is that going to work with, like, playoff situations? Because every other team is going to play 60 games and you, for, say, like, play 50. Like, how is that going to, that's going to have such a big impact on the playoffs because they already made, like, a deadline of when uh, all 60 games have to be played. have to go into the doubleheader format. That's true. That's going to be... That's, that's the, I think that's, that's going to be how it is, yeah. That's their only way of getting, like, the Cardinals and Marlins uh, playing 60 games. Or any team that tests, has negative or positive tests here on out, is you have to play, like, you can delay those games. That's true. You have to make them up between whenever you have the first positive test and between when the deadline to have 60 games is. And the only way to do that is if you have a doubleheader format um, for each each series that you that you that you miss. You could have you could play a double series and like. 
you can have you don't really need that third game you can only put you could play two in a series if if the teams wanted to or if the MLB wants them to you know that's true uh, um I'm so, gonna go with uh we're gonna switch topics here we're gonna go with the blooper of the week this is gonna be interesting uh Washington Nationals grounds crew deserves the uh, blooper of the week. Um, it was raining at uh, uh, Washington. They were playing the Baltimore Orioles. It started to rain, so the grounds crew, like they do when it rains, they got to get the tarp out. They struggled. They struggled getting the tarp out for about 15 minutes. Uh, the tarp was tangled, um, trying to roll it out, get a... Uh, put the tarp on the field and uh, it caused uh, the game not to get delayed to get postponed because they uh, took too long of a time getting uh, the tarp out. It was hilarious to see. It took them 15 minutes to get the tarp out and by the time that it was flooded. It was just flooded. It was a disaster for the uh, National Scrum Screw. Um, it was hilarious to see, interesting to see how they, uh, like, were doing it, because it took them such a long time, and by the time they got the tarp out, it was just, it, you needed, you needed a boat out there in the infield, it was just, it was bad. Um, so yeah, that's the blooper of the week, um, the Nationals, uh, grounds crew gets the blooper of the week there, um. Uh, and now what we're going to go to is, uh, uh, the, what's it called? Uh, what else did you have to say? Did you? Refs. Oh yeah, the NFL refs are getting, uh, $30,000 if they opt out. Um, if they opt out of the season, also they secure their job for next year as well. Um, this is going to be... Uh, Remember, half of these refs are on the Patriots roster, so they get paid no matter what happens. Wow. Wow, wow. That's true. That's true. That's true. But yeah, they, they uh, secure a, a spot for next year as well for being a referee. Um... Also, the NFL is looking at virtual fans in the stands on game day. That's going to be well, interesting to see. The, the NBA is doing that right and, now. And I think it's a fantastic thing that they're doing that. I think it's a wonderful thing for them to do. Um, I think it would be good because if you have fans that have like tickets to a game, you could have them sit in that could have them on the video call, right? Yeah. And, like, have them assigned to their seat specifically, and that'd be kind of cool. That would be awesome to see, um, especially if they get that to work. There, we see the NBA has done it, um, and it, 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 I, it... I don't know how the NBA is doing it, though. It uh, could be. They put it on a big billboard, uh, like it's on a... It's on an LED screen there. I don't, I don't know how they're doing. I don't know how they're doing the like letting the fans see the game. I think it's on a Microsoft thing uh, that they have uh, there. Um, Joel Embiid is out today with an ankle injury. He um, um, he hurt his ankle and he is out today. Uh, and so the 76ers Wait, are out. Can you try to go up lines in an essay? What? No, nothing. Never mind. <laughs> Joel Embiid is out with an ankle injury uh, for Tuesday, uh, for today. Um, he hurt his ankle um, in one of the earlier games. So the 76ers are out. With, don't have... Ben Simmons or Joel Embiid, so basically they don't really have a team. Um, uh, 
and I think that's going to be bad for the uh, 76ers because um, uh, without Joel Embiid and Ben Simmons, I don't know what they are. Um, they're not really the 76ers without those two guys. Whenever you think of the 76ers, you think of those two guys. Um, but yeah. Not 76ers at all. <laughs> that. <laughs> uh, Zion Williamson is out of the Sorry. bubble. Zion Williamson is out of the bubble. He got eliminated from the playoffs, uh, unfortunately, uh, for the no, Pelicans. Yeah, um, it's unfortunate uh, for Zion Williamson. Uh, yeah, hopefully he'll uh, do uh, really good like he did this year uh, for next season. He'll be out there again. That starts in December. Yeah, that's true. It starts in December. That's coming up really quick. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see, like, um... And the playoffs start in October, don't they? I think so. September or, or October? Yeah. Uh, no, I think it's September. No, October. Middle, middle September... Late October, because NBA free, uh, free agency starts in November. Yeah. And then it starts, like, and then preseason starts in uh, mid-November about Thanksgiving week. And then the season starts a couple weeks after that, so. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see uh, how like, the layoff in between, like, once uh, all the playoffs are done, they're going to have to get right back to work because the season is about to start again. Uh, it's going to be unfortunate for the two teams that will be in the NBA Finals because they only have, like, a month or less than a month from uh, another NBA season. Uh, yeah. I think that's going to affect their team a lot there. Um, unless, unless... They rest. I see the Bucks and the Lakers being yeah. in it. Yeah, me too. If they if they rest, uh, Giannis and LeBron and Anthony Davis throughout mm -hmm. like throughout the last couple games that they play during this season and a little bit at a time in each. Um, playoff game, and then save them for the finals, that way they're healthy and well rested and have a lot of energy, then I, then, then they're pretty much good for next season. Yeah, the thing so, is though, I think for with the NBA Finals, I don't think they're going to want to rest their superstars on their team, because they're trying to win an NBA championship. Uh, because it's going to be interesting to see how uh, all this uh, management is going to be like um, for the two teams in the NBA Finals, because they're going to have to get right back to work after the NBA Finals uh, happens. Uh, well, they'll have, I think they'll have a month and a half until training camp or preseason starts. So after the NBA Finals, so I, I think they, they'll have enough time to... Rest. Yeah, certainly not, uh, not the uh, break that they did have in a normal season, but it's still enough that I think they're going to do fine there. Um, so, uh, what else did you have to say? Did you have anything else that we needed to go over? Uh, the code sign, defensive tackle, Taylor. Style works from the thing. Oh yeah, I saw that. Is he gonna do? Uh, is he gonna be a pretty good player for you? Is he gonna be like starting at all? I think I think they'll rotate him out because uh, uh, they didn't sign. They didn't resign Marcus Hunt, one of their defensive tackles. So. 
I think he'll be in the rotation for the defensive tackles with DeForest Buckner. And, um, one of the other 49ers that they signed. I can't remember his name. Yeah. Um, uh, there was an interview with T.Y. Hilton um, that I saw him say that when asked about his, um, um, when asked about his hamstring, um, and if it was a problem, uh, he says, he said it's, it's not going to be a problem, he, he expects to be back on the practice field, um, by next week. Um, he says that he doesn't think he's lost any, anything during the off season. He's been working out and getting, uh, he feels faster and stronger. Um, he says that the offense will be a problem with, with uh, an ending, and I, I think I agree because you got, you got, Ohio State alum, I think, Paris Kimball. You got T.Y. Heaven. You got Pascal. You got Trey Burton. You got uh, Jack Doyle. You got uh, Jonathan Taylor. You got Arlen Mack, Naheem Hines, Michael Pittman Jr., and Phil Rivers as your quarterback. Plus, one of the best. Uh, offensive lines in the NFL right now. Um, so, I, I think the Colts will be a team to be reckoned with this year. Uh, keep your eye out for the Colts this year. And I'm not saying that because I'm a Colts fan. I truly believe uh, in Chris Ballard um, as a football fan in general. Um, I really like what he's been doing with the Colts and who he's been drafting and who he's been signing. Um, I, as a as a fan, I 100% believe in Frank Reich. Um, Frank Reich is probably uh, one of the best coaches since uh, Tony Dungy to be on the on the Colts. I hated Pagano. Pagano was the worst. Um, Caldwell was okay. Um, but I think Frank Reich will be um, will be good in year two as a coach head coach. Do you agree? Uh, yeah. I, I think that's going to go well um, with you guys. Uh, I, I certainly agree with that. Um, uh, I'm reading this thing, uh, some scary, scary news involving Vikings linebacker Cameron Smith. Uh, oh, yeah, I saw that. Tested positive and then had a uh, open heart surgery. Found out he had a, 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 a severely enlarged heart. Um, it's going to miss. 2020 season, uh, that's, that's pretty scary, um, to think about, um, he has a congenital heart condition, uh, and he's gonna miss the 2020 season, uh, that's pretty scary to think about, uh, you just tested positive and then all of a sudden, yeah, you have a heart condition as well, you found out that you had, uh, hopefully he, he will be okay there, um, Oh, also, Alex Smith was uh, cleared to play. Oh, yeah. It's going to be... Uh... Lord, for those who don't know about Alex Smith, back a couple years ago, right? I forget when. But he was a quarterback for the Washington Redskins. Um, at, the time, at the time, they were the Redskins. 
Um, and he got sacked by uh, defensive end J.J. Watt and his left, right? I forget. It was nasty. Um, it was nasty. His right leg just snapped. Snapped. Like. It snapped. Um, look it up on YouTube if, if you want to see it. Um, if you. It's not for the faint of heart, just saying it that. Is not, it, is, it is not for the faint if of heart. If you don't like injuries, don't watch it. Uh, um, but if you want to, just warning you. Just warning YouTube. Uh, I'm just giving a warning to everyone. If they want to go watch it, they can. But certainly, you do not have to if you are uh, scared with injuries and stuff and you don't like, like, snapping. Um, um but uh, thank you for that morning, Brian. Just, just had to point that out for YouTube. And uh, they came out with uh, like a documentary of how his recovery... Uh, recovery is going. Um, you can watch that on ESPN Plus if you have it, or, or I bet you can find it on YouTube here. Um, but he was cleared to play last week. So, that, this is going to be crazy. Um, no, I, what a I'd, comeback! I'd say. He's either back with Washington this season, or he's back with another team ready to go. Um, and Brock's right. It's it's an amazing journey that he's had, uh, coming back stronger, and getting to where he um, hopefully was uh, before the injury. Um, so I I think. Um, if you like comeback stories, that that's a that that's certainly that's that's certainly a, a story that you need to uh, research and watch uh, the documentary because it's um, even even the documentary. Um, I, I've seen the documentary, um, and it, it is it is gruesome. It goes. Um, it actually shows. What his leg was like after surgery, um, and how many surgeries they had to do on it uh, to get it uh, back to normal. Um, so if, if you are, um, I would I would say this with the same warning that uh, the YouTube video gets on the uh, leg snapping injury. Um, it, it is not for the faint of heart. It is, it is truly uh, gruesome and gut-wrenching. I have, I, I found a link. I'll, I'll leave, guys, if, if you want to, uh, if you want to, um, see, uh, there's a whole news article and stuff on it, but, wait, I don't think I should. I don't think I should. You can, you can do it if you want. Uh, no, but this is on ESPN's, uh, article, there, there's a, there's a photo, of, uh, there's the photo after surgery. I don't know if I should or not. Man. Yeah, there's, it shows a photo after his surgery. Oh my gosh. Should I do it? I mean, it's, it's bad. Yeah, if you want. Okay, guys. Uh, if you if you want, I'll put the, the link on it. And a disclaimer about it. Yep, I'm putting a disclaimer about it. But that link will be in the description, guys. If you don't want to see a gnarly injury, uh, don't click the link. Um, but if you guys want to hear about a story and stuff, uh, I'll leave that link in the description. But yeah, man, that's gonna hit. His story is such an inspiration. Um, I mean, think about where he was, and now he's about to play again. Uh, 
incredible, incredible. You got anything else to talk uh, about? I'm looking, um, cause... Oh, uh, we talked about Marcus oh. Stroman. Oh. What? Uh, if, if you don't know, back in 1985, Lawrence Taylor sacks Joe Deisman and oh. breaks his leg, um, just like Alex Smith, yeah. Alex Smith's uh, leg, um, and that was, I think that was, it was, uh, the same, same week, same day. Yeah, it, it was, actually. I believe. Yeah. So, so yeah. That's, that's another weird thing about this. The injury. Whole Alex Smith leg injury is that it was even though the Redskins played like that Sunday night, it, it was still the same day. It was still like by a defensive end. It was still uh, an offensive tackle that that let the sack happen. It, uh, yeah. Eerily similar, similar too. I mean, it's like same, same leg, same leg, same type of tackle. I mean, you can't make that stuff up. Like it, it like if you were to put uh, the two, the two clips right beside each other, it's like the same exact thing. Like yep. it's so similar to it to each other. It's like insane. Um, you, can, you can probably find a comparison video yeah. on that, too. Um, uh, I already talked about the NCAA Division Three. Uh, all fall championships are canceled, right? Yes. You mentioned that. Yeah, that, that's unfortunate uh, for Division Three athletes. Um, Luka Doncic in the bubble is absolutely going off. He's going insane in the bubble. Uh, he had like 20 assists and about 30 points uh, the other night. He's just going absolutely, absolutely insane. He's fun to watch in the bubble. Uh, Luka Doncic, uh, props to you, man, because you are insane. I mean... He's the type of guy that's just fun to watch, and he's electric. Like, him and John Morant, John Morant is electric. For his dunks, his speed, explosiveness, uh, he's a cool player to watch, too, in the bubble. Uh, or it was. I think the Grizzlies are now out of it. But, yeah. Um, but, yeah, I think that's it, right? You have anything else? I don't have anything else. Do you? No, I don't think so. I'm gonna end it off here. If you guys enjoyed this video, uh, make sure to leave a like. Uh, hopefully, you all enjoyed. Uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Click the bell so you don't miss any more videos. Uh, and I will see you all later. Peace.